Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Whimsical Wednesday here on Dixie Bell's Paint, Dixie Bell Paints Facebook page. It is Wednesday night, seven o'clock central time. I'm coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. My name is Tracy. I am the owner and creator behind Tracy's Fancy, and I'm lucky enough to be a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Hello, guys. I can see y'all coming on. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. I was a couple of minutes late. I'm sorry. We were having a little bit of internet issue. We've got some bad weather rolling in, so I hope we can get through um, what we want to do tonight and um, at least get a good at least get a good 30 minutes in, right? Hi, Dixie Bell. Thank you for having me. Dixie Bell is here you guys behind the scenes to answer any questions that I uh, very likely won't see when I turn my back and start painting. Um, if you are new to Dixie Bell, like everyone here is already saying hello, we've got a lot of uh, regulars that are here to watch um, as us brand ambassadors and content creators and retailers share our uh, projects with you daily, on the daily. Um, so they're saying hello. So if you're new, say thank you. Say thank you. I was reading. To, if you're new, say thank you for being here. No, we're not going to say that. We want to say thank you for being here. If you are new, please say hello. Tell us where you're tuning in from. I want to let you know a little bit about Dixie Bell. Dixie Bell Paint Company is a uh, paint company that started out offering chalk mineral paint. It is an amazing paint with freaky good coverage. Um, a lot of, it's heavily pigmented, a very heavy bodied paint. Um, I, once I got a hold of it, I quit using any other brands of paint. I just don't need it. I love it. It allows you to be super artistic. It makes everyone feel like a champion when they're painting because it is, uh, allows you to be super successful because it's so easy to use, but you can get really creative and really crazy with it and be, uh, as you grow and as you grow in your skills, the products can grow with you because they are now a one-stop shop and they offer not only just paint, but they offer waxes and glazes and uh, stains and brushes and uh, texture additives and I, I could go on, gilding waxes, I could go on and on and on. So, um, hello everybody. I'm, I'm just now looking to see who all's on here. Oh my goodness. We're doing great. Thank you guys so much. Just hit that share button. Let your friends know that we're on. We are going to do something that you don't see me do a whole lot of tonight. Um, but, uh, I didn't want to call it blending. I didn't want to call it, you know, blendy blend like CC. I didn't want to call it blending like brandy. Um, it is not my thing. That's not my, that's not something that I do. I do work with personally with a lot of color. I work with a lot of texture and a lot of patterns. That's sort of my thing. A lot of patterning and pattern and a lot of personality in my uh, painting, but uh, sometimes customers ask for specific things and this customer actually asked for a solid blue. This is what she actually asked for, but just like a solid blue with a, a specific that I'm going to show you on it and a little bit of uh, gold on it. And so I asked her if she would care if I, you know, uh, added like some depth to the blue, um, which means I get to blend a little bit. And um, I, uh, on the Bombay, it has a pair, a matching pair. So did anyone read the post earlier today on my page. If you will give me a like and follow over on Tracy's Fancy, that would be wonderful. Uh, did anyone read over on my page? I always announce on Tracy's Fancy what I'll be doing on my Whimsical Wednesday on Dixie Bell's page. Um, uh, and I said, if you didn't catch the married story, this this is a blissful pair of, of nightstands. Did y'all catch that? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Hello, Linda. Thank you. Thank you for saying hello. And Wendy to you too. Hi there, hi Yvonne. So this client asked me specifically to give a nod, just like a nod to a, of an Asian flair to these Bombay Tuscan style nightstands. So uh, there's a history behind, there's a personal reason, her and her husband, uh, his background or his eth ethnicity, um, I think maybe their wedding had something to do with it as well, but she wanted the Chinese dragon and the Chinese phoenix. On these like almost a tattoo hi Audrey hi Carol hi Linda um, she wanted uh, those on there so I've added already she gave me photos and I paint hand painted it on there uh, I did it on a, on a video the other day and posted it so that's on that chest and then this chest is gonna get a Phoenix we're not doing that tonight um, hi Dora we are not doing a Phoenix on here tonight I have to do a few things before I can hand paint that on there I'm calling it tattoo art did y'all know that the Chinese dragon and the phoenix together in marriage represents a blissful relationship? 
a blissful marriage. So I said, I told Matt, we need Chinese dragon and Phoenix wallpaper in our master bedroom because <laughs> we need some help. We need some help. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We have a very passionate marriage, meaning we are very strong in our feelings, whatever it is that we're talking about. No one would ever describe Matt and I as blissful ever, not in a million years. Um, so anyway, uh, this one is done other than I have not added gold and I have not, I've not top coated it and I've not added gold. So let me show it to you. Okay. I'm going to turn this. I hope I don't lose you. There we go. That is the difference between a shaded and painted piece and a flat piece. So this, that piece used to look like this. This is how it started out. So there's our little hand painted dragon over there on the side. And this one's going to have a Phoenix on the opposite side, but we, head this direction tonight right now we're gonna head this direction do y'all like it give me some hearts uh ruth you like that word passionate i like that word too hey miss sue um yeah give me some hearts share uh, the, let me tell you what i've done here i did the dusty blue um all over then i uh i did the dusty blue and then i top coated it no sorry dusty blue then i did the artwork on it then i top coated it no sorry <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dusty blue. Then I shaded it with paint, which is what we're about to do. Artwork on it. Then I top coated it. Then I did besting wax on it. And now I'm going to top coat it again after I wax a, a day or two to, to cure. Okay, so that one is sitting tight. It will get a top coat and it's going to get some gilded gold on it lightly as well. Okay. Thanks guys. I love her too. I think she's beautiful. I really, 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 really like, actually it's a he cause that's the helm. That's the man, the dragon. And this one's going to be the Phoenix. This is the lady. Okay. So my camera like this. So if someone comes on late, they can see a little bit of that and a little bit of this one. So this is what we're going to do tonight, you guys. We, um, I have painted this piece here. I primed it with Boss Primer. We did that together last week. Um, I used Boss White as my primer. Um, some areas I did two coats over the carvings because I had a little bit of bleed through happening. Boss uh, White Primer is a primer that blocks odors and stains and stops bleed through. And I did have some bleed through coming through on some of my carvings. So I did two coats of boss and we talked about micro mountains. You remember guys and pouncing and we even had a winner and I even uh, am sending a, a can a, or a jar of boss to someone, which I don't even have my boss out here because we aren't talking about boss, but she won boss. Um, thank you, Ruth. Hi, Jeanette. Okay. So then I coated, uh, this is one coat, one coat of dusty blue right here. Oh, really, Nancy? I'm not having any issues on my end. Oh, but we did lose quite a bit of people. I wonder I wonder why. Ah, internet issues? No, not on my end, you guys. But who knows? If you will leave and come back. But obviously, we messed up because we just lost half our people. Ah, that makes me so sad. Oh, hang on, guys. Hang on. I'm still there. Broadcast interrupted. I'm, I'm clear as day here, guys. Oh, no. Dixieville's seen it, too. Go out and come back. Go out and come back. Oh, are you serious? I'm on. I never left on my end. That's so weird. It never left on my end. Are y'all there? Y'all coming back? Come on, numbers, come back up. Come back up. We are having issues. We are. It just happened to me. Okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna touch my phone. I'm just gonna work. I'm gonna start working. All right, so I did one coat of dusty blue. This is a blue, it was my first time to ever use this color. I've never ever used this color. I actually really like it if you're going for a super hardcore beachy vibe. I know Lisa, I'm sorry. The connection's bad. I knew we have some bad weather coming in. We're supposed to get hail tonight. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna keep painting guys. I'm so sorry. Okay, so if you use color, if you're wanting to do some shading, or blending um, if you but actually really I'm not trying to blend tonight I'm just doing some shadowing okay shadowing and shading if you will use colors that are very similar to each other um, they work really well together so I thought that this color right here could be my dark shadow and this color right here could be my lighter shadow so do you see dang 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 I know I'm powering through Dixie Bell as hard as I can let me let me go check one thing I'll be right back hold on Internet's going, it's fine. It's, it's That's what I told him. I said, I told him we had a storm coming in. Okay, we have problems. Uh, 
I know. We have fiber optic, guys. I don't know what it is. It's got to be the storm. I'm sorry. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so this is dusty, dusty Blue. It was my first time to ever use it. I love it. But I'm going to bring in Stormy Seas. No pun intended. <laughs> I'm about to paint with Stormy Seas, Matt. So I'm bringing in Stormy Seas. So first, I am going to open up my Dusty Blue to say it just keeps kicking in and out I'm just gonna keep painting okay so I'm gonna start with this drawer right here I'm gonna wet it down just lightly wet it down and I'm gonna use my oval brushes right here these are uh, this one is oval small these are oval mediums that's what I have medium because I may I may only use two colors I know guys I know I'm so I'm gonna wet it a little bit I'm just gonna spray it just like this just like that. Wet it. Uh, just putting a little bit on here. I just want to re-wet my drawer. Okay? Just want to re-wet. You can go any direction. Just get your paint on. Uh, mostly going to be doing my shadowing edges of the drawers. So, just re-wetting it like this. I just want to put a fresh coat on, and then I just take my jar, and I take my brush, and I lay it just like that. That means this brush is for this color. Then I open up my Stormy Seas. I am Dixie Belle. I'm just, I'm just going to keep working. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's too bad. Too bad, right? Okay, so same here. I'm going to wet my brush. Oh, this is a new brush, by the way. Oh, actually, I better save that one. I'm going to save that one for my blender. Okay, so here's my other. This is my Oval Small. Wet up. Going to dip into my Stormy Seas, and I'm liberally, liberally going to add some of this to all of the outside here, just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom as well. Let me go ahead and do this together. Just reactivating what I've already got so that I can actually start to blend some of that. Okay? So, like you saw, blue brush goes on blue jar. Here's my dark brush adding my stormy seas um, around this outside edge as well, just like this. Now I'm not, I'm choosing to not uh, do that on the other one, but I did kind of bring it down into here just a little bit. And actually, actually, on the other one, I did not do it here. I am gonna put some dusty blue back here. I actually treated it all the way down. So I'm gonna cover that up. See, it's not a big deal. I put paint where I didn't want it and I just covered it up with the other paint. Back to the dark, I took it all the way down into this bottom corner and all the way down here on top of this shell. I forgot that I did that. If you're doing matching pieces, by the way, it's really good to have your other piece right next to you um, so that you can kind of uh, make sure that you get them matched up appropriately. Like I, for some reason, so I'm just adding some paint, very sloppy, don't have to be neat about it. Just get it on there. Now, this darker brush, I'm gonna set right here on top of this one. So I'm gonna pick this brush back up and I'm gonna go up here and I'm just gonna kinda add a little bit of water. And this brush has that dusty blue paint on it. I'm just gonna start bringing that out into, into the stormy seas, just like this. And when they come together, they make uh, like a gray blue. So it's not, and you don't want it to be as dark as the Stormy Seas. It's sort of just like blending paint in a, in a plate, but you're not blending it in the plate. You're blending it on your piece. You're actually making it happen on the piece. That's, that's the difference. It's no different really than doing uh, paint mixing. The trick is getting it uh, to not look patchy and making your transition smooth. So here we go, just like this. Do you see the difference between this and that? It's a big difference, right? Then you wanna go back where your uh, edges are and kind of soft. Usually when a brush is new, you should take it and just kind of do like this with it. Anytime, these brushes do not shed, ever. It really, really is easy. I promise you, it's really not hard. It just takes a little bit of practice. And I call this part feathering, that dry brush. I just kind of feather it like that. Now I'm gonna go back 
and wipe off this excess here. Montreal, Canada, pretty bad weather there too. I know, I am so sad because this was such a, I never do this. So I was so excited to do this with you guys. Um, what I did was I just uh, took that blended blue off. I picked back up my dusty blue brush and I'm putting on uh, some fresh dusty blue right here in the middle where my water had kind of spritzed just covering up some of that. I don't, if, if you leave the water on there, it'll dry kind of spotty. And I don't want, if you leave like your spray, like the spray spritz, it'll dry a little bit spotty. And I don't really want that. So I'm just filling this all in like this. Now, if you notice over on the other Bombay, you'll notice that, uh, it looks heavily shadowed and that's because that's that best stain wax. That's this. That's the best dang wax in brown, which is so easy, easy, easy to use. It is a water-based wax that wipes back really, really easily um, and super easy to use. Okay, I think that looks pretty good from here. Can you see? Very subtle, very, very subtle shading. Hi, Francis. We are really struggling on here tonight. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Teresa. You like it, okay? Nice and subtle. You do need to let it dry. Um, the, the sides of the piece, I went ahead and let me add just a little bit of blue. We don't need to add too much, just a slight bit, just to wet it a little bit. And then I'm going to go over it with my stormy seas a little bit as well. Set that brush down. We'll spray, spray my brush. I don't really want to spray over there on the legs. So I just spray my brush and I'm just going to add this up here, get it into the cracks. Give it a good coat like this. I'm just kind of uh, wet brushing it, just sort of, uh, it's like a dry brush move, but I'm just sort of not getting into all the nooks and crannies because my best dang, bra uh, best dang wax in brown is actually gonna get in there. But do you see the difference between that one's a little bit darker and this one is super bright still. This is still a super bright one. Hi, Rachel, how are you? No, it's best dang wax in brown. It's brown. Yeah, it's brown. Um, okay, so let's do this leg as well over here. All I did, this was my base coat that I did a couple days ago. I'm just barely putting any blue on here. Just getting it a little bit wet here. Just enough that when I put the, the uh, stormy seas over it, uh, that they'll blend together just a little bit. Same thing, here's my stormy seas brush. Spraying it instead of my piece because I don't really want to spray on my piece right this second. And kind of dot that off. And then just do like a, a dry brush technique except, except your brush is wet. <laughs> and blend with that wet, dusty blue that you had on there. And it just darkens your paint color. Just gives you that blended, darker look. I'm just like that. See, it's, it's not hard, you guys. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. Don't make it difficult. And you won't, you won't get better until you try. You won't, you won't get better until you try. The key is, I'm telling you, one of the key, the, one of the keys is being light with the brush. So when I was, a, when I did that final feather and I had this clean brush, it was clean and I went through and I feathered. I told you, I'm just going like, I'm just, I'm dusting it like, like a feather duster, just like a feather duster. You just go in and you just feather out where your shading is. So it blends together. So it doesn't look like a stripe. You know, you sometimes you'll see, or maybe when you try it or when you're first learning, you'll go to do this and it looks like you painted a circle, like hard line difference between the two colors. You want to marry those two colors together. And the only way to do it is for them both to be wet and uh, blend them, to, you know, let their boundaries cross a little bit and then come in with a clean brush and just very lightly with a feather duster, just feather it out. That's what I call it. Just feather, feather it out. Everybody's doing hashtags nowadays. I need to do a hashtag feather it out. <laughs> that's what I call it. Feather it out. So that's that. So um, let's see. You want to do up here, up here at the top? It's dusty blue, Lynn. It's dusty blue. Okay, actually, before I, I don't need to move on. Y'all watch me do that, and y'all can rewatch that again. Let's talk real quick. Let's talk about because actually, Isabel's asking me a question that someone asked me on a comment of the pre-video that I shared over on my page to on Tracy's Fancy. 
Uh, she asked, will I clear, wait, what did she ask me? Will I clear, uh, let's see, do you use clear wax before brown wax? No, but I do use a top coat. So after, and I don't always, I don't always, but on this piece, I knew that I, that I wanted to, I knew that I would need to. So I used clear coat and satin. You can use any clear coat, but flat's not gonna do you much good. So clear coat and satin, you can use a clear coat and gloss if you want to, and you can even use Gator Hide if you want to. Um, so once, once I get this finished, and then I paint my Blissful Phoenix on the side over here, <laughs> um, and that dries, then I will clear coat the entire piece. I'll clear coat my tattoo right into it. I'll clear coat over all of this. Then I will break out the wax. And if you want to see me waxing, if you will go over to either Instagram or uh, either my Facebook or my Instagram, Tracy's Fancy, I posted a video of me waxing that one, that completed one over there today. I posted that today of me using Besting Wax. Comes in a tin just like this. I usually use Besting Wax in black, um, but this is Besting Wax in brown. That's how much I used right there. This was a brand new can. And that is how much I used on that entire Bombay chest. And these things are big. Um, Brenda, really, honestly, it's like whatever is out on my workbench. It, I, it doesn't matter. Like, if I'm going to gator hide a top, which I do gator hide most of my furniture, I do a clear coat first. Is that what you're asking? To how do I determine if I'm going to do a gator hide or clear coat over the top of this before I wax? It's usually clear coat and satin. That's usually what I use. Clear coat and satin. Then um, you let that dry, you know, a couple of hours, uh, but mine dried overnight. And then I got out here today and I videoed myself and put it on so y'all could see it, but I uh, did the best thing, wax and brown. I applied it liberally and then I wiped back and you don't even need a wet cloth. Once you've sealed it with a top coat and then you wax, you don't even need a baby wipe or a wet cloth to wipe that back. You can wipe it back with, in fact, here's my round. Here's my rags that I that I wiped back. This is for, this I used two rags today. That's what I used to wipe back all of the accents over there on that piece. And I'll be doing the same thing here. I'll let this dry for a couple days. Actually, we're leaving, so I probably won't even gator hide these till I get back. But when we get back, I will gator hide over the top of these or top coat and satin, one or the other. But I will sandwich the wax in between a top coat and a top coat. Because you can do that with um, Dixie Belle products, with the waxes and the paints. You can do that. Do you wipe off the wax after brushing it on? Always, Dora. Almost always. Now, I will tell you, I don't have one up here. Let me get my brush real quick that I used, okay? So, I don't know. I, I know I brag about these brushes a lot, and a lot of us um, use them, but these are the French tip brushes that we have. This is what it looks like when you get it. This is what it looks like when you've used it about a thousand times. Um, so, and I love them. Love, love, love them. So, that when you go watch that video, if you haven't seen it, if you'll go watch it, when you watch that video, uh, you will see me using this brush. And it's a beautiful brush to get in and around all the details. It's a a beautiful waxing brush um, and you know what honestly guys that Bombay chest that I did over there that you'll that you will see that is besting wax and brown but you can get that same look this is the beauty of Dixie Belle products you can get that same look by using um, voodoo gel stains over that you could use the tobacco road voodoo gel stain you could use espresso or the coffee bean in to get that you could use caviar um, you could use paint. I'm telling you paint colors. You could use paint colors to get that same look. Um, you could use the no paint gel stain if you wanted to. Um, you could, it's a crazy, it's crazy because you can use multiple products to get this, to, to get the same look. It's really what your personal preference is. And there's a hi Nina. And there's really no way to know until you just start playing with them. Um, let's see, what is the purpose of using wax and clear coat? I thought you use one or the other. Terry, that's a good question, but it's because um, I didn't wax the whole piece. You'll have to go watch the video. Most of us use the dark waxes as art. You, you use it as art. So the difference between the way this piece looks and the way that piece looks 
I didn't just put wax all over that thing. I didn't put brown wax all over it. I wanted to save my highlights that I have. You can see the highlights in the drawers. You can see the, you can see this here is highlighted and this is highlighted and that's highlighted. I wanted to save the highlights. Bef so I didn't want to dark wax over that. So I only dark waxed for, you're right, you can use it as, as a top coat, but that's not what I was after. I was after it because I wanted to use it for art, to, to give it depth. And then um, I top coated it to seal it. I hope that answered your question. Um, Alamo Ranch, right down the road. So um, does anyone else have any other questions before, before we go? I think we're gonna go, but um, I hope you'll give this a try. I really do. I hope you will. I had a little bit of paint pulling up there. And the beauty of this too, guys, let's say, I'm gonna tell you one more thing. So let's say you're in the middle of doing this and you get called away because your dinner starts boiling over or burning or your kid falls down or something like that. Um, thank you, Dixie Bell. Uh, let's say you get called away for a minute and you're in the middle of this and you have to walk away. It's okay because when you get back, literally you can just pick up where you started. Even though everything dries, all you need is your water. You just spritz it, <laughs> let it sit for just a second Maybe spritz it again and then just start, start, continue on. It reactivates. Isn't that amazing? Would you use the wax on a flat surface? It totally depends, Laureen, on what look you're going for. If you want a, if you want your paint color, let's say you have, um, let's say you have this blue and you want the, it's on a tabletop, a flat tabletop, and you want, this is the first time I've ever used it, Mary, it's Dixie, I mean, dusty blue, dusty blue. And the one over here is dusty blue as well, but it's had a lot of highlighting and low lighting done on it, like hair. Uh, so if you have a blue flat tabletop, but you wanna deepen it, then you could do the best stain wax and brown all over the top of it. You could use um, a voodoo gel stain all over the top of it if you wanted. Um, and it will deepen that color for you. You could do a color wash with paint and it will, and it will deepen the color. But I just don't, I just don't usually do that. I like to just, I mean, sometimes I do if you want it to. I just don't really do that look very much. That's just not a look I do. But absolutely, yes, you can. Your spritzer bottle is great. It was a gift from Miss Sue. Miss Sue was on here. She uh, sent this to me. Sue, a friend of mine from Florida, sent me this. Isn't it awesome? Uh, someone else had a good question here. Let's see. Did you already paint the lighter color on the second Bombay? No, I did not. So I've only done... The lighter color I really only added right here, it's this one right here, Manatee Gray. Um, I can do that real quick, we have time. We have time, let me do a top drawer up here. Uh, okay, let me get my blue, this is my blue brush. I'm just gonna wet it a little bit and I'm gonna put that kind of like this. This one actually didn't get a whole lot of Stormy Seas. Then I'm gonna get my Stormy Seas brush, dip it, wet it. I'm gonna add that to the outside a little bit. Oh, what happened? My paint, my chest got nicked. Y'all see that nick? Who's been messing with my piece? Someone was out here and ah, to lighten that up. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, blending brush that I had here. I'll spray it with a little bit of water, a little bit more. Like that, and then she's asking about the lighter color, which is the third color, but I, I used very little of it, um, and it's actually manatee gray. Manatee gray, this is the color right here. And I'm gonna take, uh, we'll take, we'll actually use the little French tip brush here. I'm gonna put very little of this, very, very, very little. Just kind of pounce it here in the middle, just like that. And then what I did was I actually took my, my uh, blue brush, and I pounced right over it, like right on top of it, just like that. See that, just right, I went right through the middle of it. Kind of pounced it on like that. And then I take my dark brush, which has the stormy seas on it, add a little bit to it, and just kind of feathered it out like that. Very light. I'm just light, like I'm barely running that across the top of there, okay? 
So that's that. See the difference between that one and that one. It just gave it depth and dimension. And then I highlighted under here too as well um, with a little bit of the gray. I need to add a little bit of more blue underneath here like this, just in this little one area. Put a little bit of blue. See, it's lighter when it's wet like that. And then I'll take the manatee gray and I'll do the same thing. Just kind of tap that in. Tap it in up there like that. I think I did it over here as well. Just like that. And I'm gonna get my blue again that already has blue, my blue brush, it already has blue on it. And I'm just gonna kind of tap it out. Just like this. And that's it. I just highlighted underneath there like that. See how cool that is? You're so welcome. Um, how do you know which colors will blend well? Well, I showed these three colors together. Blending, if you're new to blending or shading or highlighting or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's easier if you use three colors of the same tone. So um, this is the color my client wanted. This was the color she wanted, but I didn't want to give her a flat one color piece. So I chose these colors that are all from the same family. This is more blue, this is blue gray, and then this is gray. So as long as you stay in that same color family, they're gonna work really well together. Let's say um, you wanna do like peony and light pink and flamingo or apricot and flamingo and peony. They kinda all are in that sisterhood together, you know, um, that would work really well. Or uh, like the golf and peacock and, um, oh my gosh, the golf and peacock. And what's the, what I'm having a brain fart, the dark. I can't even think of what's the, come on, Dixie Bell, help me. <laughs> Hold on. What is wrong with me? Hold on. <laughs> Mermaid tail, mermaid tail. Mermaid tail, <laughs> the golf and peacock and mermaid tail. Um, you know, in the same family like that, they'll, you'll have a lot better uh, experience with your first time blending. When you get good at it, you can go outside of that and start doing like complementary colors that are whacked out and absolutely crazy and people don't think they go well together. Yes, yeah, spooning with Tracy, we spoon with Tracy on Fridays and we talk colors. Colors you would use with caviar to blend, I would stay in the grays if you're new to blending. So I do like caviar and gravel road and hurricane gray, you know, real close together like that. Anyway, guys, well, I'm going to have to let you guys go so they can get ready for the next person that's coming on. But thank you so much. I appreciate y'all being here tonight. Um, what a difference though, lighter version of this is highlighting and that's shadowing. See the difference. This is highlighting and that boom, boom, big difference between the two because we haven't done like the dark shading. We're just kind of doing a little bit of subtle and then I'm gonna lay the brown wax on top of that. So I hope you learned something. Um, that was fun from someone who doesn't do a whole lot of blending. Um, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in there. What are the cards called? What cards? What cards are we talking about? Jen, what are the cards called? What cards? Was someone talking about cards? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm so sorry. Did I say something about that? I'm so sorry. Uh, Dusty Blend Storm Seas. Anyway, guys. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dixie Bell, because I never said that. By the way, you can find your Dixie Bell paint at your local retailer. If you go to DixieBellPaint.com and put your zip code in the Find a Retailer search bar, they will uh, tell you where the closest retailer is to you if you are a touchy-feely person. If you would like to try any of these colors that we've talked about together or any of these wonderful brushes that we've talked about, um, I would love it if you would use my affiliate link that's right up uh, attached to this video, and Dixie Bell also put it in there for me. I really appreciate that. That is a way that Dixie Bell helps uh, support us so that we can continue to bring you um, good, good information and um, tips to help you learn. 
and help you be successful so we can continue making the world beautiful one piece of furniture one beautiful craft project at a time i love you all we will see you guys next wednesday anyone that wants to stick around i'm going to hop over to my page for about 20 minutes tonight so i'm going to be heading over to tracy's fancy and dixie bell y'all have a good night everyone have a wonderful wednesday and a safe and happy labor day weekend okay love you guys take care bye bye